Greetings, one and all, and welcome to the very first episode of a tutorial series I am going to be running for the next month or so within From the Depths. In today's episode, we're going to keep it incredibly simple, and we are going to be building our first ever ship. Now, most likely, I will not include weaponry within this particular tutorial, although that will be the very next thing we do. So if that's already out, there will be a link in the description, and possibly possibly an annotation somewhere on the screen. In today's episode, all we are focusing on is making a metal ship quite small with a basic engine, basic propulsion, and a basic AI in order to move it around. Upon completing that, we will have our first ever basic ship of the tutorial series in which we can add weaponry to later. So for now, I'm currently just standing on this little building I built quite some time ago, and we are going to get to work on our ship at the end of this dock. So let's get building. Now to begin building, if you are not already on a vehicle or structure or other construct, you can simply press B whilst looking somewhere into the sky or into the water, wherever you want the initial block to be placed. But since I'm on a building, that doesn't always work, so what we're going to do is simply move out using the arrow keys after pressing B, and then we are going to go into new object and then simply click on vehicle. So here we are, we now have our initial block which will be the foundation of our ship. So to make this thing hover you simply press caps lock and then it will float in place so you can do work on it and not have it constantly bobbing around and causing you to be seasick. So to begin we are going to build a hull whilst keeping an eye on the centre of mass. The centre of mass although right now isn't too important it will be important later when adding the propulsion systems. The propulsion system should always be in line with mass if possible. You can negate things like this using the PID system and other stuff like that, but that's generally considered a more advanced thing which I will be leaving out for this tutorial. I will actually be leaving out quite a few things which some veteran builders might yell at me for, but this is going to be the bare bones getting something to float and getting it to move. If you press N, you will enter mirror mode and then you can place two two objects at once, which is much, much easier. So I'm going to go ahead and build a really simple looking hull. As I'm building this, I would like to very briefly say there is drag in this game. So making things hydrodynamic or aerodynamic, depending on if you're building an aircraft or a ship, is actually quite important. Now, it's not so important that you can't deal with it if you have happened to make the ship rather flat, but it would be better to try and add as many spiked sections as possible to the front just to make it very, very sloped. In fact, by spiked sections, I actually meant slopes. Try to add as many slopes as possible so that the water will simply glide past. Something like this, for instance. Another note I would like to add whilst I add the bottom section to this very basic hull is that where possible it is generally preferred to build with metal beams rather than metal blocks. The reason being that the metal beam has more health for the four meters it uses than four singular metal blocks. In addition to this, it takes a lot more damage to break a beam than it does to break a block and therefore you will end up with less hull breaches and less little shots getting through and causing damage to the internal side of the ship. Here we are then, the ship's hull is now finished. I would like to say though, that this is not an optimal design. It's far too thin and it's a little bit too deep, which means it's going to rock a lot and every time we do anything to the ship, it's going to massively change the center of mass, the drag and pretty much everything else. This has been done intentionally so I can show off the problems which can easily occur when you're building a ship and how best to try and fix them, or at least how I fix them. This is all, of course, my own personal build style. So if we let go of the ship by pressing caps lock again, 
you will see the ship will begin to sink. The reason being, the inside is now getting completely flooded, and of course it's made out of metal, which simply sinks. The ship will sink to the bottom of the ocean and will be completely useless. So how do we avoid that? There are three major ways to fix this, two of which I'm going to now cover. The first of which is to add either an air pump or a helium pump, which will cause the centre of the ship, any volume within the ship, to become buoyant. This is by far the easiest and also I would argue the most dangerous because any hull breaches will cause the buoyancy to simply go away as the internal hull starts to flood. So here we are as you can see there the air pump stats are on the side and the total available submerged buoyancy is around about 600 although it goes a little bit higher as the ship goes up and down in the water. The volume is 1322. So right now that is keeping us afloat. That's as simple as that. We now have a floating vessel. The one reason why it's so rocky is because the centre of mass currently is far too high. You ideally want the centre of mass to be in the middle of the ship and as low as possible. This this will make a very, very stable ship. You can do this by adding a keel to the bottom, which is what we're going to do later. The second way you can keep a craft afloat is by using these, the hydrofoils. Now these will only work when you're moving forwards, or at least water is actively moving over them. So if we add the hydrofoils right now, they will actually do pretty much nothing because they're currently all nice and stable in this flat line. The way to cause them to actively control your depth is by the use of control blocks which I'm not really going to get into too much right now, but essentially you can have it so if the ship is pitching or if the ship is going below a certain depth, you can then make these tip upwards and then of course that will cause the ship to go upwards with them and then you can make them go down if it goes above a certain level. But that is a little bit fiddly and we won't be getting onto that too much as we will be getting onto the air pump. The final way though I will just mention is a bit of a weird one and that is either using dedicated hellerblade spinners or by using the PID system to cause the ship to stay fairly level in the water. Once again, something which isn't the best when you're first building a vessel. So we're just going to stick with the air pumps. When using the air pumps, it's generally best to have several along the ship and then to segment the ship into several parts. This way, if one section of the ship takes damage and one of the blocks gets destroyed, it doesn't instantly sink the ship. Right now, because the hull is one continuous space, water is now flooding in, the air pumps are useless, and the ship would sink. So one block gets destroyed and you've already lost the fight, or at least you're probably going to lose the fight. That is where the hydrofoils tend to be a little bit better because you can take a lot of damage and the hydrofoils will still probably work as long as you're moving forwards. Of course, with the air pumps, you don't need to be moving forwards, so actually using a combination of the two tends to be best. But for now, we're going to simply segment the ship so that it's no longer one continuous hull space. We have the very large section here, which is then going to be segmented again. There we are, so we have the centre, which is 567 metres. We have this section, which isn't currently working. Sometimes you do need to replace them, which is 476. And the back, which is actually working, 225. There we are, so the ship is once again floating. The next thing we are going to add is the engines. Now we are going to be adding the propulsion systems such as the propellers last. The reason being at that point we will know where the center of mass is very likely going to end up and so we can add them along that. You really want the propulsion to be as accurate with the center of mass as possible. Now when it comes to the engines there are actually quite a few choices. The most simple or at least arguably the most simple is the electric engine, which uses energy from batteries to provide regular engine power. The batteries can be fueled from either a fuel engine, a steam engine, or once again, the most simple, the RTG. The RTG provides a constant, very low amount of energy per second at no additional cost all by itself, although the initial cost is very expensive. This smallest RTG will be costing you 750 
50, although once it's destroyed, it only costs 37.5 to repair, so it's a one-off cost to set this up. And that is most likely what we're going to go with, because honestly, the engines deserve a video on their own. The steam engines can be very weird, depending on the size you're going with, and the fuel engines can either be incredibly efficient or incredibly power efficient, depending on what you want. Although there are, of course, prefabs you can simply select and then place down. Either way, though, that would require fuel, which would then require, if we go to resources, a fuel refinery. Now that doesn't have to be on this ship, but it will need to be somewhere because the fuel engines will not run on regular material, although the steam engines will. Like I was saying, there's a lot of choices when it comes to engines, and right now we're going to go with the easiest, because easy is always good. So we're going to put down a couple of RTGs, although these are quite expensive, they are also fairly weak, and we're going to put these along the centre where I want the centre of mass to end up, which will be somewhere around here. We add two RTGs, and then we add a series of batteries like so. There we are, all of the batteries are connecting, so that now, when we add the electric engine to the top, that is now connected to the batteries, the batteries are powering the engine, and as you can see in the bottom right, we have an energy bar, which is the second bar down on the very right hand side, and then near the bottom we have the actual engine power, which... Naturally, the phone goes off while I'm recording, so I do apologise there for the sudden sharp cut halfway through my sentence. Like I was saying, in the bottom right you can see the engine power just above the heart symbol and next to the engine symbol itself. We are currently resting on 559. So now we've added this, the centre of mass has somewhat changed, and let's let it float down into the water yet again. Ideally, we want the centre of mass below the water level. In fact, the lower, the better. So as we can see, that's simply not happened. At the moment, it's still too high in the water, which is causing it to rock horribly. So what we're going to do is add ourselves a keel. Now, normally, you would do this a little bit later if you were adding a weapon system, which of course you would want to do, as the weapon system is quite heavy. So what we're going to do is just go down a little bit using these metal blocks, and then we are going to use the lead blocks here, which are incredibly heavy. And these will go along the bottom here, like so, and this should, hopefully, make the centre of mass a little bit lower, as well as centralising the mass, thus making the craft a little bit more stable. The centre of mass is now here, between two blocks, which is a little bit annoying, but as we can see, the ship is actually a little bit more stable. Not particularly, and I'm thinking I may add a little bit more lead. Now this isn't particularly attractive, you can of course do this in much better ways. You can even just use regular metal in higher numbers. Just keep on adding this until the centre of mass is on a single block, so it's easier to use. If it's between two blocks, it means we're going to have to be a little bit creative with our thruster placement, or in this case, our propeller placement. Add this here, and add this there, and now the centre of mass really doesn't want to go down. This is what happens when you make the front so weird looking. There we are, the centre of mass is now on a single block, which is far easier to work with, and the craft is a little bit more stable. It's never going to be completely stable, because we have built this incredibly long and incredibly narrow, which is just a very unstable design, so I do apologise for that. And honestly, normally you would not need a keel this extreme, as you would be adding weapons systems, material storage, and all sorts of other things to the craft, perhaps in addition to extra armor on the inside. Because I'm not adding these, at least not in this video, I had to improvise and add a lot of lead to the bottom to simulate this. I am, however, going to add a couple of ammo barrels to the front, and then a couple of material storage, which is only needed if you are using the localized resource mode in the campaign. But let's pretend we are for now. So there we are, we have the centre of mass on a fairly low block, we have an engine, we have the hull, it's floating, 
it's essentially a floating ship at this point. So, what we need to do next is add the AI. The AI, of course, is the mainframe. Hello, mainframe. Now, the mainframe is the center AI of your ship. It's going to be the most important block, and so you tend to keep it fairly safe. And a lot of designs will actually encase the AI with wood rather than metal. The reason being, wood does not conduct EMP, whereas metal does. So if an enemy is using an EMP weapon and your AI is completely covered by metal, there's a good chance it's going to be knocked out, whereas with wood, it will be safe from that. However, of course, wood is much more vulnerable, so it shouldn't be used as the only armor around the AI. But for now, since we're not going to be fighting anyone, it's okay to just leave it here out in the open. Now normally with the AI you will now need to start adding things like the general purpose processing card which is all to do with the detection equipment, although if you are brand new to the game and you don't want to mess around with that it is certainly quite a complex element to the game. Please bear in mind you can always go to the options, go to game configuration and then change this here, the automatic detection accuracy. I tend to have this on override in the sandbox mode whilst I'm testing out weapons and such, so I don't have to constantly worry if the detection system is working. By default, it will be on 0.1, simply meaning your ship can't really see anything without the detection system. If you override it and take it all the way to 1, it no longer needs a detection system at all. All ships, all constructs can see each other perfectly without the need for that. So, that is something to bear in mind if you are brand new and don't want that added layer of complexity. It's honestly quite a new addition to the game, and it was per it was perfectly fun even before that, so certainly not something you're going to miss too much. So with this, what we're going to focus on now is making sure this ship will be able to move. So in the cards and slots, like the card we just added, we can now add the naval AI. This will now open up this menu, well, it will allow the opening of this menu by pressing C, so that we control how our ship is. Currently we're on off, we can have it on combat, patrol, fleet move, build, everything else, although for now we will be keeping it on fleet move. This means, when I add propulsion, this is going to try to move here. Press M to go in the map, and I'm just making it try to move over there. But of course, right now, we don't have any propulsion systems. It is actually trying to use it already. The naval movement algorithm card, the naval AI I've just placed, you can actually customize to your liking. You can make it so the broadside is a little bit further away or a little bit closer. You can dictate the broadside's angle, how close you will allow enemies to get, how close you will allow this ship to get to others, and if you want to simply disable reverse. I normally disable reverse because I've seen a lot of problems being caused by that, but by no means is that necessary necessary, and this honestly can just be left as it is at least for now. So next we want to add our propulsion systems, and that means we want it to be in line with the center of mass, which is right here at the bottom. So what I'm going to do is just remove this little bottom section here, so that we can add our propellers, huge propeller, and that can be added there, which I believe is the correct block. There we are. So that is our propeller, and let's just see if this causes any problems. Dipping up and down a little bit, but like I was saying, that's being caused by the fact it's not that heavy at the moment, and it's a little bit too narrow. It's just a problem with how we've built the overall design, but honestly that's not too much of a problem. Once again, as we add weapon systems and other things which will weigh down the ship, this will be much less of a problem. So let's put this back up, and what we could do to negate this a little bit is by adding the regular propellers, which are not quite as powerful. There we are, not quite as bad. Another problem is the centre of mass isn't quite perfectly in the middle, which is also contributing to this rocking motion. So the ship can now go forwards, but how can it turn? We can do two separate things for the regular turning of a standard ship. We can either add the rudder, which goes at the back here, once again, try to go with the centre of mass. 
if you press backspace, you can actually see where all of the different inputs are coming from. So that purple line there is the rudder. So as you can see, it's going left and right because we're already on a pretty straight course with our next target. But let's say we want to move over here instead, and we don't fall off the ship. It's now turning the ship towards the next target. A little bit more stable than I thought it would, honestly. So there we are, it's actually got a lot better by the addition of this. If you would like sharper turns, you can use the regular propellers, or of course the huge propellers, in order to turn as well. And to do this, once again, go with the center of mass, and simply add them to the side of the ship. If you add them to the back, however, make sure to press Q when you're selecting them and put them as thruster reverse, otherwise they will think they're on the front and then the controls will get very, very weird. There we are. That's actually pretty stable. I'm fairly happy with this considering how narrow the ship is. We can of course make this a lot faster, we have loads of spare engine power by adding a load more propellers, because right now this is fairly slow. There we are, we are now moving at 12.3-ish velocity, which is pretty decent considering the very small size of this craft. It's fairly stable, especially considering the insides are mostly hollow, and overall I'm happy with this as a nice beginner vessel. I've just added a couple more propellers, all of course in line with the center of mass, although I have gone above and below in equal measure so that it's still fairly stable. I have removed the rudder in favor of just adding a couple of basic propellers. And so we have our basic ship. Now with that, there are quite a few things I have left out, like I was saying. So if you have any questions, feel free to ask in the comments below. I will try to answer as many as I can. Although please bear in mind, I will be expanding on this tutorial series as I think about what I want to do next with it. I really hope I've helped, and if I have, then of course, likes, favorite, shares, comments, all that good stuff helps out me, helps out the channel, and most most importantly, shows that From the Depths tutorials are things you want to see more of in the future. Hopefully with this you can expand on it and make your own glorious vessel. Honestly, the bigger, the, the more stable, so go insane with it. Thank you again for watching, and goodbye.